Oh man, that plug looks ridiculously bad. Everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Today we're uh, back on a local farm here, working on a 1998 Chevy 2500 Silverado 5.7 liter. And well, customer complaint was that the air conditioner wasn't working. I checked the air conditioner and is blown cold. However, the engine had a misfire, like a dead cylinder. It was just always shaking. I'm like, well, do you want me to diagnose that? They're like, oh yeah, sure. We didn't know it was misfiring. <laughs> so here we are, got the Varus booted up, scan for codes, and we have a P0463 and a P0507 control, idle control system, RPM too high. No misfire codes. Okay, so this is an older, you know, heavy duty truck, so Let's see if we do have misfire counters on this thing or not. It would be really helpful if we did. We do. Okay, let's start it up. N number five, right there. Why is it not setting a misfire code for number five? I don't know. Let's put it in in gear, load it a little bit. Constant miss on number five. Save that data. So number five is gonna be on the driver's bank, third cylinder back. Pop off the spark plug wire, let's see if we have spark. All right, so here's spark plug number five. Let's uh, disconnect it. Well, there's your problem, lady. Oh man, that plug looks ridiculously bad. Obviously, the it's probably not sparking because of all those contaminants. So let's uh, let's clean all that junk out with a wire brush and pop back in see if it runs. All right, clean the plug out. Best I could, let's uh, just run it without the plug in there, see if it actually sparks. It's gonna be a little loud. So, good compression, now we have spark. The question is, is there good fuel getting to that cylinder? We've seen fouled spark plugs before, if you remember on that old F-150, and a clogged injector caused that uh, misfire. So let's put the plug in, see how it runs. If the misfire goes away, then we're good. If it doesn't, it's gonna be fuel related. All right, spark plug is back in the engine. Let's see what happens. It's still missing. Let's look at our misfire counters. Just like I suspected, spark plugs don't get fouled for no reason. Yep, number five's counting up still. So, let's check for a clogged fuel injector. In functional tests, we can do injector balance. This is a really awesome test. Uh, it'll basically, you connect the fuel pressure gauge and then activate each injector one by one. Look at the fuel pressure drop. Fantastic that GM provides this so you don't have to you know, manually pulse the injectors. Uh, it would actually be kind of tough because this is the Vortec you know, spider system. But let's uh, 
shut it off and run the injector balance test. All right, so we got a fuel pressure gauge connected, the SU r and kit, make sure there are no leaks. Prime the pump a couple times. So it goes up to 60, holds at 55, that's good. And sure all fuel lines are connected. Ignition's on, engine must be off, continue. Injector balance can only be pulsed once, continue. Okay, so let's start with injector number one. It primes it. Energizing fuel system. Record pressure reading. So let's start, we'll start at 55 PSI. Click continue. About 46. So record 55 to 46. Okay, great. Continue. Injector number two. Same process, it primes it, start at 55. Continue. Boom, 46. Continue. We're just gonna go through all of them to be consistent. Continue. Same exact reading, so 55 to 46. Injector number four. Yep. Very consistent, and our suspected bad injector, let's see what happens here. Record fuel pressure drop for injector. Well, that is pretty close to the other ones. Number six. Continue. Number seven. Forty six again. And last but not least, number eight. About forty six. Okay, so now we can turn the key off. Start it. Still got that misfire. So under load it's actually pretty smooth. But an idle man it really shakes. We could pop in the pressure transducer, see if the compression is getting a little, little weak, but that plug looked really bad. So I don't think that cylinder is firing at all, but now it looks like it is contributing under load. So with, with the spark plug disconnected, we can see that even under load, it's still shaking counting up the misfires. With the spark plug connected, it gets smoother under load. It just misfires at idle. 
Sounds like a compression problem, unfortunately. So spark plug's reconnected. You can see under load, in gear, we'll power brake it. Look at the RPMs in the misfire counter. Right around 1200, it goes away and it gets smooth. You can feel it seat of your pants. If you let off the gas just a little bit, it'll start picking them up. So, we don't really need to do a compression check. There's nothing else it could be. So, with the clean spark plug, I tell them just drive it like you mean it. So it cleans it off once in a while and this truck will keep on going. It's got 148,000 miles, so eh. You'd think it would last a little longer than that, but uh, I think that's it for this one. We'll see you next time, bye-bye. As you can see, the desired idle right now is 650 RPM. Engine speed is 900 RPM and the IAC is at zero. What are the possibilities here? Either the IAC is mechanically stuck, the thing is trying to close off the air, or there could be an idle stop screw that's messed with keeping this throttle plate open. That screw right there. The one or the other. Here's the IAC. So how do you how do you tell? It's definitely against the throttle stop screw. So we just unscrew that a little bit, drop the idle down, and then uh, make sure the IAC can stabilize it. You know, it should be about 30 counts and all the accessories are off. So I marked the idle stop screw. We're gonna turn it counterclockwise until the I desired idle drops to whatever it needs to be. And the IAC actually activates. Let's give it a shot here. So it uh, looks like we're barking up the wrong tree. The throttle stop is already not touching the plate. The throttle plate is fully closed, but however, idle is still too high. Why is that? Let's run the truck and plug this opening. See if the IAC is moving or not. Because the command could be going there, but it doesn't mean the actual motor is moving. And if we plug this hole and the idle drops way down, we'll know that the IAC is mechanically stuck. Well, it's not the IAC. <laughs> Check this out. If I plug the PCD hole, there's massive vacuum in that engine. Wow. That's a problem. Could there be a PCD valve in here? that off, the idle should drop to something more reasonable. I think this PCE valve is just massively... ripping my glove out. Let's cap that off, reassemble everything and see how it idles. Alright, keys on. Let's uh, reset all the codes and reconnect the MAF. Plug that in, plugged in our vent pipe. So, a PCV system, this side is connected to the intake manifold, which is under vacuum. And the PCV valve is designed to only let some, you know, under full vacuum, you don't want the whole crankcase like, <laughs> it's basically acting like an air leak because the air is going through here, through the crankcase, through that PCV valve, which is basically stuck open. And what we want is, um, for it to be 
pretty restrictive at, at idle. So let's clear these codes out. Yes. Continue. Data. Engine. So let's start it up. I'm going to put my glove over that valve. Okay. Now we're just going to plug it off. And look. Now our idle is back down. Our IAC is at 90. That's more like it. Now if we take the glove off, the PC valve like ate it. Let's rev it up a little bit. I bet the PCV valve connects right here on the cylinder five, near the cylinder five intake runner. And that was causing A, a lean condition on number five at idle. B, fouled the plug, it just made it all wrong. So, let's see, it's our love still blocking the airflow here. RPM 800, IX at zero. Wonder why it's not idling down right now. Alright, uh, there's still, still quite a bit of vacuum here. So now, if there's still a vacuum in the crankcase, what does that mean? That means that there's a, um, a leak between the crankcase and the intake manifold as an intake manifold gasket. That's interesting. Okay, so the problem is not with the PCD valve. I have that disconnected. Even with the intake manifold you know, plug capped off, we still have a massive vacuum in the crankcase. So that intake manifold gas is definitely leaking hard core. So what are we going to do about it? That's, that's why it's eating oil and piling plugs. What's the best way to leave this engine? That, that's how much air it's sucking. Through the intake manifold gas. Nice. That's why the idle is too high. <laughs> the crankcase is being like a idle air control valve, but it's not—it's not terrible.
So from this, we can assume that the intake manifold is leading, leaking right at cylinder number five mostly because it runs, you know, it misfires at idle. So it's running lean on that cylinder. So the air is being sucked in from the crankcase instead of with the fuel mixture from the actual intake manifold. That's the problem with this truck. So intake manifold gaskets actually should fix the oil burning, should fix the misfire, should fix the high idle complaint. What more can you ask for? We'll give the customer uh, an estimate, see if they'll go for it. All right, thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.